What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered about the Layers Effects Studio in Affinity Designer on the iPad? Well that's what we are here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen, I'm a media design educator and we have been systematically going through each of the studios in Affinity Designer and today we are talking about the Layers Effects Studio. This is a studio with a lot of different features for ways to add different effects to your objects. So let's go ahead, let's dive in and see what all those different effects are and how we can control them. All right, so now that we're here in Affinity Designer, let's go ahead and take a look at the effects studio. The icon for effects is just a little F and a little X and it's right below the symbols. So we're just going to go down there and select effects. And let's go ahead and pop that out. And you can see right now everything is grayed out and that's because we need an object or a layer to apply our effect to. So let me go ahead and select this square here. And then you can see things light up so that we can actually use them. Now we saw a little bit about effects when we were working with symbols, just so we could see how effects are carried with symbols, but we didn't really go into what they all are. And there's quite a bit going on here, but once you kind of understand how they work, they all function similarly. The first thing that we're going to see is this scale with object. So we can turn that on or off. And it's really important to know if this is on or off because when you go ahead and adjust the object, that effect will either scale or not scale with it, which will have very different outcomes as you scale the object. We can't really see it right now, so we'll come back to that once we've applied some effects. The next one is fill opacity. So this is just the opacity, and as we slide it down, our fill gets less opaque, and as we slide it up, it gets more opaque. So this is just an easy place for you to dial that in. You can do that other places as well. Okay, let's just go ahead and look at each of these. Now, when you're in an effect, you can turn it on, which is when you have the blue dot, but to actually access that effect, you have to tap on it so that it's selected. Once you have it selected, you'll notice down in the bottom, you're going to have the options for that effect. So for the Gaussian blur, we have a radius. And as we slide that up, you can see that it blurs out until it's basically gone. You can keep doing it basically infinitely. You can bring it down to zero and there's no blur at all. Now, if we tap on that, we get our calculator so that we can dial in a specific amount. This is helpful if you're trying to apply the same Gaussian blur effect across multiple objects in a composition. This one, which is preserve alpha, that's just a toggle which will preserve the amount of transparency in the object if it's on and won't if it's off. So that's the Gaussian blur. There's not too much going on there. Let's go ahead and turn that off and we'll turn on outer glow. Again, we have to tap on it so that we get all of the options for it and different effects will have different options depending on what they are going to do. So you can see here you have a blend mode and this is all of the blend modes that we're used to just from the standard layer menu, right? But this blend is going to specifically be affected by the outer glow. In order to see that, we of course have to have a glow on. So we need to apply some kind of radius and we're going to need a color other than white. So we have opacity, radius, intensity, and color. So let's go ahead and grab the color. And let's just go and apply something that will be complementary, like an orange. And we still can't see anything because we have no radius. So we need to increase the radius. And then you'll see we can dial the opacity down or up. And then we have intensity. And then, of course, we can change our mode here. But the mode will only affect things that it is on top of. So we can't really see anything here at this point. All right, so that's the outer glow. And if we turn this off, it's gone, but we can always turn it back on and it will have kept our settings. The inner glow is going to be the same thing, except that it's going to go to the inside. And of course you can have multiple on at the same time. So we can have an inner glow and an outer glow and you can see how that changes the effect, right? So go ahead and turn that outer glow off again. Inner glow has essentially the same options, except that it has an origin point. So you can choose to e do either the edge or the center. So it can come from either place and that's just where it's going to cast from. Whereas the outer glow, of course, is only casting off from the edge. All right, let's turn that off and go on to the outer shadow. So outer shadow is going to be similar, except it's going to be a shadow, but it's still going to be around the edge. The outer glow generally has an opacity of 100, whereas the outer shadow starts with an opacity of 50. The other option that we have here is the offset and the angle. So we can choose the way the shadow is being cast, which we can't do with the glow. So you can see we can change where our offset's going and we can change the angle at which it's going. So this is really helpful if you decide where your light source is in a composition and then you can cast shadows in the correct direction with that light source. 
course we can bring up our intensity or down when you bring it all the way up it basically becomes a solid object which doesn't look much like a shadow at all so you don't really want that and of course this one also has a blend mode this is going to be the same with the inner shadow so let's turn the outer shadow off and go to the inner shadow turn that on and we get a lot of the same options so let's go ahead and add in a radius and you'll use these shadows a lot if you're building things like buttons for user interface design or something like that there's also the offset and of course it has the intensity angle so you can see how a lot of these things are repeated it's just where they're being applied that changes all right now let's go to the outline so on the outline this is very similar to a stroke but it's just controlled a little differently so you can see you have same kind of outside center and inside options that you might have with the stroke but you also get a separate blend mode here and you get a fill style which can give you some different options that you won't have with the stroke and of course you can select your color all right, now we get into something a little bit more intense here, which is the 3D option. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And you can see it immediately starts to apply a 3D effect. But let's click on 3D so we can see our options. We still have radius. Then we also have the option for depth, which is connected to radius. So when we change this, it changes it because our link radius and depth is turned on. But we can turn that off and then we can adjust them separate, depending on what kind of effect we're going for. We also have this soften which you can see the edge is really hard when that's off, but we can bring that up and really soften it. And then there's the opacity. Now we have a little arrow over here that we can click on, and this gives us some more advanced options. So for example, we can adjust the curve profile of it. So if you know some things about 3D images, you can get in here and you can deal more with the adjustments. If we wanna get rid of these points, we just click on them and hit delete. And then we also have a linear option. And then over here, we get even more options, the way we can affect this. This is more than a lot of people want to go into, so I'm not going to go over every single option here, but there's quite a few of them. For example, you can choose where your light source is. You can add multiple light sources to adjust where they are. So you can get really involved in kind of this 3D effect here. Let's go ahead and turn off 3D, and we'll turn on Bevel and Emboss. This gives us another kind of 3D effect, useful sometimes in buttons and there are different types so you have pillow emboss outer and inner okay similar to some other options that we've seen before and then we also have our radius so how far it goes out you can see that that looks kind of similar to what we had with the 3d effect we also have link radius and depth just like we did before and then we have soften azimuth which i don't even know what that means so if you know what that means go ahead and drop that in the comments below and elevation which is how high i guess it is and then here again we can add a curve profile and then we have options for our blend modes and color for both our highlight and our shadow so you can see we have a highlight running along our left hand side we can adjust that to like an orange and then we can give our shadow like dark blue and we can make those adjustments here all right let's go ahead and turn off bevel and emboss and just go to color overlay Turn it on and what this will do is it'll allow us to add another color into our composition here and we can change our blend mode to adjust how that works now this might not be super helpful for an object which already has a fill but you could apply this to different layers for example you could apply this to a photo layer to get a particular look something like that so there are different cases in which this might be useful to you so that's a very simple one. Let's go ahead and turn that off and then we'll do gradient overlay. So similar to a gradient fill here, we can of course change the blend mode and the opacity and then we can also change what type of gradient it is. We can add in some different stops here. Choose different colors. And overall do a lot of things that we can do with the fill tool. There's some more advanced options here like scaling the X and Y, changing the offset, of where it's at so you can see it's kind of working within the bounding box of the rectangle there so there's some things you can do to be honest i've not used these lower ones very much because they don't come into my work very often but i'd love to hear how you use these different effects in your work go ahead and turn that off and the last thing that we have here is styles and styles are just like presets of effects that you can use and so they can be saved and then you can use them later so for example if we tap on one of these like metallic ones, we'll get a certain set of effects. So you can see when we go back here, you can see that inner glow is turned on, outer shadows turned on, outline, 3D, bevel and emboss. And that's kind of what's useful about these is that you can then save them as a style and reuse them if you want many objects to look the same. 
and you can have different groups here right now there's just the default but you can go ahead and you can click here and you can say add style from selection you can add in categories of your own um, delete and rename categories and you can import and export styles from other people so there's a lot of different things you can do to get certain effects there let's go ahead and turn those off again and you can see that that style actually changed the fill color as well so the last thing that I want to do is just go ahead and turn on our Gaussian blur here so that you can see the scale with object so I'm just going to give us a blur and turn on scale with object then select my object and scale it you can see that the blur scales with it but if I turn off scale with object the blur will stay the same even as the object gets smaller so you just want to be aware if your scale with object is on or off all right and now we've looked at all of the different parts of styles again this is not an area that I in particularly this is not an area of affinity designer that I use frequently or probably to its full capacity so go ahead and drop in the comments and let me know anything that you found that works really well or places that you like to use these different layer effects all right i hope that you have enjoyed learning about the layers effects studio here in affinity designer on the ipad if you have any questions about this studio or if i missed anything that you know of go ahead and drop in the comments and let me know that as well as letting me know any other questions any other questions you have or things that you'd like to learn using the affinity programs or other ipad programs and don't forget i've got lots of courses covering things in both affinity designer and affinity photo as well as a host of other programs that are all on skillshare and you can find links for those in the description to this video we'll chat in the comments and i will see you in the next one